Hello, dear students. I am Sanjeev Kumar Bali, assistant professor in the Department of English, Andhra Lila College. Today, we are going to discuss a poem written by Lord Tennyson, namely Ulysses. You must have heard about the poem Ulysses. It's a long poem. And uh, before uh, we talk about uh, Ulysses, we have some information about uh, Lord Tennyson. His full name is Alfred Lord Tennyson. He, wa he was born in 1809 in Somersby, Lincolnshire, England. So he is a great poet, all that is known, and uh, he was also known as uh, the Poet Laureate. As a matter of fact, he was uh, devastated by the death of his friend, Arthur Hallam. And after that, uh, great poetry emerged. You know, from poems like uh, In Memoriam, The Passing of Arthur, and even uh, Ulysses, and also a poem like Titanus, and he wrote so many poems. Today, we are going to discuss about Ulysses. Ulysses is also known as Odysseus. I believe you all know that. And these are some of the pictures that you can see on uh, the PPT. Uh, you know, uh, the pic one picture shows uh, Ulysses traveling on the seas. And he is uh, infested by so many dragons, attacked by so many dragons. And we also have pictures of so many uh, Trojan heroes who fought in uh, the battle of uh, Troy, including uh, Achilles. And when we talk about uh, the form of this poem, uh, the poem is written in blank verse, or uh, you call it unrhymed uh, iambic pentameter. And when we talk about uh, the form, it happens to be a dramatic monologue. And what is a dramatic monologue? I believe most of you understand. It is a poetic form in which uh, the speaker of the poem is a character, he is not uh, the poet. So, the poet makes one of the character to speak and maybe you know he is addressing a silent audience. He is the only person who is speaking and the audience they are listening. They do not respond, they do not ask any questions. So, it is it's like a long monologue, it is like a speech. So, he is addressing some uh, uh, silent audience and uh, when he is speaking, he is uh, talking about this character. His character is revealed and the things are left to the discretion of the readers. So, they have to understand, they have to decipher what you know the character is all about and also the characters of you know other people about whom he is uh, talking about. So, uh, here also in Ulysses, we see Ulysses. Uh, talking uh, to unidentified audience, he could be talking to his son Telemachus, he could be talking to you know his mariners, co-mariners with whom he is going to travel or he could be talking to you know his uh, people, the subjects of uh, Ithaca. And when we talk about the tone of, uh, tone of the poem, it is elegiac in nature. As, as I have said, uh, he lost his friend Arthur Hallam and that left him totally shattered, devastated and he was very upset and mourning his death. So, he was trying to come back to his own terms in life. He was shattered and the poem you know reference to death as the end of uh, a life full of adventures has a biographical relevance. And uh, in this poem, you can see uh, Tennyson lamenting the end of a lifestyle or the life of a restless warrior or an adventurer. And when we talk about themes, uh, there are you know many themes in this poem. We have search for adventure, we have exploration, we have death, we have old age. And before we go into that, we can have a look at the poem as to what the poem is all about. When the poem starts, what the situation is like? We all know that Ulysses is a great what the situation is like. We all know that Ulysses is a great warrior, he is an adventurer and he was fighting in Trojan war for 10 long years with great uh, heroes like Achilles. So, the war continued for 10 years between the Greeks and the Trojans and finally, uh, the Greeks won and after 10 years of war, Ulysses when he was coming back home, he was accosted with so many problems, hindrances, impediments, so many adventures and it took him another 10 years to reach his kingdom Ithaca. So, by the time he reaches Ithaca, he is an old man. He is coming to his kingdom, he is coming to his family after 20 long years. And now, he assumes his duties as a king, but he is not happy there, because he finds the life of a king very boring, uh, very vegetative, passive and monotonous. 
because when we look at uh, you know the life of uh, ulysses it is very very adventurous and full of dangers any reader would imagine ulysses to be basking in the glory of his uh, past accomplishments and being very happy but that is not the case of uh, ulysses he is very very unhappy he feels you know it is a, a futile exercise he is wasting his time because it's a very boring job just sitting on the throne uh, leading a very comfortable secure luxurious life administering justice to the people and the kind of people he finds in ithaca he feels they are savage people they are uncivilized they just eat they sleep they hoard uh, and they don't even understand his greatness so he is not happy with his people and then he recalls all his past uh, adventures and uh, glories he says you know i cannot rest from travel actually that is uh, the real problem of ulysses he cannot rest from travel he has to travel all the time he has to seek adventure all the time and he feels he says that i will drink life to the least to the last drag and then he starts talking about uh, his travels uh, to many places in the world and uh, which gave him lot of experience he was exposed to all kinds of governments peoples councils customs traditions and he became a part of all that he met but in spite of uh, having lot of exposure experience he was still not uh, satisfied he had an insatiable appetite to learn more to see more to travel more to explore more and to understand more so he was he was not at all happy he was he was not at all uh, satisfied and then you know he says wherever he went he was recognized he was welcomed he was honored and he was very very happy with all those things but when it comes to ithaca he finds the people you know very very vegetative as a matter of fact any other person in place of ulysses if he has achieved so much he would be a satisfied person he would like to take a back seat he would like to retire and he would like to take rest call it a day but ulysses is not like that he has you know this insatiable hunger he wants to travel more and more learn more and more so he says uh, i i cannot uh, stay here any more so he is uh, representing all his experience all his accomplishments in the form of an arch and he says when i see through this arch uh, you know i i i i feel that there is a vast world which is lying untraveled unexplored and which is so uh, attractive it is gleaming it is uh, pulling me towards it and when i am moving forward to reach the margin the margin seems to be fading forever and forever so he is not uh, satisfied with his achievements he is not uh, satisfied with his uh, uh, knowledge and learning whatever so he wants uh, to undertake another adventurous journey on uh, the sea maybe for the last time and he would like to reclaim his uh, uh, lost uh, glory or past glory so he says uh, uh, the kind of achievement you know he has so far is not satisfactory and he is not happy with one life that is why he says even life piled on life is not sufficient how can somebody happy uh, be happy with one life and for me very little remains because Ulysses is an old man, and he feels he has just three or four four years left for himself, and he feels that it is very very dull to pause, to stop, to call it a day, or to make an end of your life. He cannot do that, so he is ready to go for another kind of journey. And when we talk about his kingdom, when we talk about his wife, when we talk about the people of Ithaca, he is not at all worried about them because he has a lot of faith and trust in his son Telemachus. Telemachus is the son of Ulysses, so he has full confidence in his son. He has full trust that in in his absence he is going to take care of uh, the kingdom. He is going to take care of his mother. So he would like to hand over the scepter and uh, the isle Ithaca to Telemachus, and he feels that Telemachus is uh, very very obedient, very prudent, and by making use of his uh, prudence, gradually, slowly he would. Uh, make the rugged savage people of ithaca very refined and civilized though you know uh, telemachus is a good son and uh, he is a, he, he can be a, a good ruler taking care of his people but definitely he is not uh, like his father because uh, they differ in the spirit 
Ulysses has an extraordinary, extraordinary spirit, but uh, uh, the focus and the concentration of Telemachus is on the common duties of uh, life, what, what, whatever it is. Ulysses is very, very confident and satisfied that in his absence, his son is going to take care of uh, things. And then, you know, he is uh, addressing his mariners because his mariners are waiting there and, you know, the ship is ready, the sails are all puffed up. And then, you know, before they can go, he is giving some kind of pep talk to his mariners. He says, uh, my dear mariners, uh, maybe you are old, I am old, but that is not something which is going to discourage us or deter, deter us. Then he is reminding them of their past glory. He tells them that they are uh, great people, worthy people who fought, who strove uh, not even with human beings, but also with gods and demigods. So he is asking them to take their positions in the ship and uh, start hitting, you know, uh, the waves with their oars so that they can uh, go on uh, for another adventurous journey. And then he, he talks about his new purpose that he wants uh, to go beyond uh, the sunset. He wants to go beyond the baths of the, the western stars. And he also, you know, utters a word of caution. It's possible we are washed down by the gulfs. It is also possible that we reach the happy isles where we could meet, uh, you know, our old friend Achilles and we could be very, very happy. So, though we are old physically, though, you know, much has been taken away by time and fate, but much remains. So, we understand this indomitable, invincible attitude and spirit of Ulysses. He is, he is somebody who cannot be put down. He says, though physically we are weak, but, but mentally we are very, very strong and we, we are not going to submit, we are not going to yield. We have these four themes, you can look at the screen. One is search for adventure, uh, exploration, death and old age. Uh, so far as Ulysses is concerned, already I have said that he, he wants to go for another adventure. He is not happy in his kingdom, so he wants to uh, and undertake another adventurous journey uh, on the sea, may, maybe with his uh, mariners. So, he has this uh, unquench unquenchable thirst, insatiable uh, desire for uh, adventure and uh, learning and knowledge. And when it comes to the second uh, uh, theme, exploration, he would like to explore the world. Because though he has traveled much, he feels there is much to be seen, much to be traveled. As I have told, he is uh, expressing his entire experience or what he has learned just in the form of an arch. And he says, there is a vast world which is lying to be unexplored and uh, traveled, explored and traveled. And then he talks about death. Uh, it also, you know, highlights the biographical details. Because I have already told you, he was devastated after the death of his friend. So, we see all those things even in the poem where we have constant references to death and he feels that he is very close to death, but he is, uh, uh, he is uh, determined that before he dies, some work of noble note could yet be done and he is also motivating his uh, co-mariners. And then uh, you have uh, a theme of old age, like he says, we are all old, but what we are, we are. In spite of our old age, we have that heroic temper. And with this temper, we can achieve, we can travel, we can explore, we can learn and we are not going to submit, we are not going to yield.